Today we're learning English with Finding Nemo. In this scene, we see Marlin, this overprotective father of Nemo, sending his son to school for the first time. And because they are leading a more secluded way of life, it's something that doesn't come easy to him. But we'll make it easy for you because every week we put out lessons just like this one to help you understand your favorite TV series and movies without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. And to help us grow and bring more fun lessons like this one for you for free, please help us by subscribing to this channel and hitting the bell down below to never miss any of our new lessons. By the way, Tiago, so in this scene we will see how Nemo goes to school for the first time, but in the context of fish, the school is not only an educational establishment, but it also has another meaning. Can you shed light for our viewers and listeners on this? What does it mean, the school of fish? Should I know this? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, sorry! What does it mean, the school uh, of fish? I thought it was a school for fish. <laughs> Is there, is there a deeper underlying meaning that I'm missing here? Uh, school of fish? I don't know. Isn't it supposed to be a school for fish? I mean, am I missing anything here, Xenia? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the school of fish is actually in the real wild world, right? Not in the cartoons, not in the movies. Is that group of fish when, you, you know, did you watch the documentaries when they move synchronously? So this this group of uh, fish is called school of fish. Oh, interesting. That's exactly what happens in the movie, right? Uh, well, no. It goes about the actual educational establishment, the school of fish. <laughs> But oh, maybe we will okay. see a couple of times this school of fish in the movie as well. So guys, pay attention if you watch the full movie. So when fish go like this, very synchronously, they, they make a school of fish. Hmm, I wonder where we're supposed to go. I'll pick you up after school. Come on, you guys, go Get it back. Come on, we'll try over there. Excuse me, is this where we meet his teacher? Well, look who's out of the anemone. Yes, shocking, I know. Marty, right? Marlin. Bob. Ted. Bill. Hey, you're a cloudfish. You're funny, right? Hey, tell us a joke. Well, actually, that's a common misconception. Clownfish are no funnier than any other fish. Ah, oh, come on, Cloudy. Yeah, do something funny. Yeah. Oh, all right, I, I know one joke. <laughs> um, there's a mollusk, see, and, and he walks up to a seat. Well, he doesn't walk up, he swims up. Well, actually, the mollusk isn't moving. He's in one place, and then the sea cucumber, well, they are mixed up. There was a mollusk and a sea cucumber. None of them were walking, so forget that I Sheldon, said Sheldon, get out of Mr. Johansson's yard now! So, Thiago, the scene is opening with Marling, the father, not being very sure where they have to go, and he says this phrase, I wonder where we're supposed to go. Hmm, I wonder where we're supposed to go. What does it mean, supposed to do something? When you're not sure what your next course of action should be, or you, mm -hmm. you're not sure what other people expect you to do, you can say, oh, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's funny, but the next phrase, I say it every day to my kid. <laughs> When I yeah. take her to school in the morning, I always say this, I'll pick you up after school. Bye. I'll pick you up after school. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to pick up a kid from school? When the kid ends the school day, you have to go to school to, let's say, collect the kid again, retrieve the kid yeah. again, and bring it yeah. back home. <laughs> I think it's worth also pointing out, Xenia, the opposite. So the opposite of picking a kid at school is? To, I would say, to take to school. What's another mm. way to say that? I was actually thinking of another phrase or verb, to drop the kid off school. Ah, to drop off school. Right. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> so you drop mm -hmm. off the kid. Five, six hours later, you come back to pick the kid up. <laughs> Excuse me, is this where we meet his teacher? Well, look who's out of the anemone. Anemone, this is kind of a sea flower. But the thing is, they may sting 
other fish, but clownfish actually developed a special bond with them, so they are protected by the sting of anemone. That's why they uh, stay closer to this flower to be protected, to be in a safe mm. place. I find interesting the pronunciation of this word, anemone. We have two yeah. schwa sounds here. The first A is a schwa, uh, and mm -hmm. then the O after M is also a schwa, uh. So, anemone, mm -hmm. anemone. Hey, you're a cloudfish. <laughs> you're funny, right? Hey, tell us a joke. Yeah. 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 I don't know why that fish is called clownfish, but there is a joke in the movie about this name. Yeah, because, you know, they, they tell Marlin, hey, you're a clownfish. You're funny, right? Tell us a joke. Mm -hmm. You know, in the movie, he's supposed to be like the, the fool. Yeah, in the group there. Yeah, and he tries to, like, defend himself. And he's saying that that's a common misconception. Funny. Well, actually, that's a common misconception. So misconception is some wrong assumption, right? It's something that is not correct. It's not correct thinking. Yeah, and he actually says that clownfish are no funnier than any other fish. I really like this structure, no funnier than. He's like comparing and you can uh, put there any other word instead of funnier. Yeah, no sillier than. No better than. Mm -hmm. No better than. Clownfish are no funnier than any other fish. Ah, oh, come on, clowny. Yeah, do something funny. So he <laughs> uses clowny instead of a clown uh, fish. Can you describe grammar yeah. point here in this word, clowny? Yeah, it works as a uh, diminutive, right? Like you are reducing mm -hmm. the word from clown to clowny. And in this context here, it sounds even a little bit condescending, I would say. Yeah. Like yeah. you are making yeah. fun of, in this case, Marlin, mm -hmm. of the other person or fish. You know, hey, Connie, come on, tell us a joke. Almost like a, a little bit okay. of bullying I sense there. Same here, I sense you know. that too. But actually, this ending, Y or IE, you can use to make the word sound in form of endearment. So doll mm. becomes dolly, dog becomes doggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about the context, right? Mm hmm mm hmm there's a mollusk, see, and, and he walks up to a seat. Well, he doesn't walk up, he swims up. Well, actually, the mollusk isn't moving. He's in one place, and then the sea cucumber. And so in the next couple of sentences, we come across such names of marine animals as mollusk and sea cucumber. Something cool about that, Xena, is that, you know, watching movies and series is that you also get to learn very specific vocabulary. Because, yeah. for example... I would never normally try to learn these words like mollusk or sea cucumber, but simply by mm -hmm. watching a movie such as Nemo, I can get in touch or exposed to that vocabulary and mm -hmm. go, oh yeah, so yeah. that's a sea cucumber. Oh, interesting. Or a mollusk, a mollusk, right? Yeah. So, yeah. At least having them in your passive vocabulary, like what we're yeah. talking here about, like there is a certain amount of vocabulary that you want to have in your active vocabulary, that you want to actively use it in your speech. But there is a certain amount of words like these that it's mm -hmm. nice for you to be aware of them and how they sound. So, for example, when you come across them the second time, you already know them, right? But you don't use them. They are not in your active vocabulary, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, they are mixed up. When you are lost or confused, you can say, like Marlin says here, I'm mixed up. Yeah, he was trying to tell a joke. Something went wrong. He forgot the sequence of it. Yeah. So I just, he says, I'm mixed up. All right, you kid. Ooh, uh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where, where'd you go? Dad, Dad, can I go play too? Can I? I would feel better if you go play over on the sponge beds. Where I would play. What's wrong with this fan? He looks funny. Ow! Hey, what'd I do? What'd I do? Be nice. It's his first time at school. He was born with it, kids. We call it his lucky fan. Dad, see this tentacle? It's actually shorter than all my other tentacles. But you can't really tell, especially when I twirl it like this. I'm H2O intolerant. <laughs> I'm obnoxious! Oh, let's name the zones, the zones, the zones. Let's name the zones of the open sea. It's Mom, Nemo! Oh, you better stay with me. In this clip, there are a couple of really nice vocabulary, but also we'll explain some connected speech here. And the first one is, where'd you go? Right, Tiago, what happens here? Where'd you go? 
Ooh, uh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where, where'd you go? This is a contraction for where did you go? Mm -hmm. So what we have here, we reduce the auxiliary did to a D and put it together with the where. And then we also have the Y for you right after. This combination of D plus Y normally sounds judge, judge. Mm -hmm. So we go, where'd you? Where'd you go? Yeah. I would feel better if you go play over on the sponge beds. So the word sponge here, you may probably know this word. This is something you would use in the kitchen when washing up dishes, you use sponge. But in the sea world, this is another marine animal with like porous body. Uh, and he called it sponge beds. Probably they're like soft, right? <laughs> I think in the clip, uh, there is a, a small fish that goes to play there on the sponge bed and gets stung or something, gets hurt. And then Marlin's <laughs> like, oh, no, you're not, not going to go there. <laughs> yeah. He really acts like this helicopter parent. Do you know this term? Uh, yeah, that's uh, another term for overprotective parent, right? Like a exactly. helicopter parent is always, you know, a, above hovering the kid over yeah hovering over the kid like hey don't do this don't do that don't go there let me ask our viewers if you're a parent yourself or if you're a child and you have overprotective parents how do you feel about it share with us in the comments are you overprotecting your kids or do your parents overprotect you yeah let's keep the conversation going here in the comments about that <laughs> what's wrong with this fit he looks funny. Do you know the word fin? Is it like the the fish's wing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, just that. like a wing-like part, right? Mm -hmm. It's what the fish uses to swim, right? Yeah, the most prominent fin I can think of is the shark with its like, you know, mm -hmm. the big one, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> hey, what'd I do, what'd I do? Another example of connective speech here. What you mentioned earlier, Xen, about active vocabulary and passive vocabulary applies here for me. Because, you know, like you, I don't think I would say this myself actively, what mm -hmm. I do. But mm -hmm. I know what it means, yeah? So not everything you know should be part of your vocabulary. But it, basically, that's what it is. It's a contraction for what did I do. I would normally say, what did I do? What did I? What did mm -hmm. I? But if you hear mm -hmm. this, what I do is the same thing. See this tentacle? It's actually shorter than all my other tentacles. Tentacles are long parts of the body of a fish. They resemble arms. And yeah, mm. they're called tentacles. That reminds me of that villain from Spider-Man, you know, Dr. Octopus. He has tentacles as weapons, you know. But that's a good association. So when she's showing off her tentacles, uh, she says that one of them is shorter than the others. And she adds, but you can't really tell. Uh, what does it mean, you can't tell? This is a fascinating example because you can't really tell means, in this case, you can't really see the difference between this tentacle that I have and the other tentacles. You can't tell the difference. But mm -hmm. what I find mm -hmm. fascinating, Sen, is that the words here are so simple. You can't really tell. Mm -hmm. But the meaning they form is actually this. It's about differentiating one thing yeah. from another. Like, mm -hmm. can you tell mm -hmm. the difference in this yeah. case? I believe there is another phrase um, to tell things apart. I can't tell them apart. It's the same. Like, I can't see the difference between these two things. We could see how hard it was for Marlene to stay as cool as cucumber. This phrase, as all the other phrases and words from this lesson, are saved in the deck of flashcards on our real life app. We created these flashcards for you to learn and review the vocabulary so you could never forget them. The app uses the advanced technology so that more difficult words show up more frequently than the words that you already learned. Each flashcard also has the example sentences, the audio pronunciation, and image to help you memorize the word better. So download the app today now. You can do it by clicking on the link in the description to this video or by searching for Real Life English app in your favorite app store. And Tiago, another really funny one. The one fish says, I'm H2O intolerant. I'm H2O intolerant. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> you know, humans would say that I'm lactose intolerant, right? So what does it mean to be intolerant to something? Your body, your organism is sensitive to it, so you can't consume it or digest it like lactose. I can't drink milk, for example, with lactose. Mm -hmm. But 
This is funny because the fish lives in the sea. The water is made of H2O, right? Yeah, yeah. But in the clip, he then, after these words, uh, he sneezes. So probably he has like allergy or something like that, right? <laughs> I'm obnoxious. Why they are like saying all this is because they spotted this uh, smaller fin Nemo has and as a support, as an encouragement, as showing that vulnerability that they also are not perfect. They also have some flaws. They start like, you know, naming what they have uh, different, right? So obnoxious in this context means like rude, right? It doesn't look so scary, but that's what he says. And obnoxious means like being rude. So guys, we're doing great job today. We've watched two clips from Finding Nemo. We've learned some vocabulary with you. And here comes the final third part. Let's watch it. Pelagic, Master Pelagic, Pelagic. All the rest are too deep for you and me to see. Huh, I wonder where my class has gone. Oh, there you are. Come aboard, explorers. All oh, now. Exploring is oh so lyrical when you think thoughts that are empirical. Dad, you can go now. Oh, hello! Who is this? I'm Nemo. Well, Nemo, all new explorers must answer a science question. Okay. You live in what kind of home? In a anemone. Okay, okay, don't hurt yourself. Welcome aboard, explorer! Just so you know, he's got a little fin. I find if he's having trouble swimming, let him take a break, 10, 15 Dad, minutes. Dad, it's time for you to go now. Don't worry, we're gonna stay together as a group. Okay, class, optical orbits up front. And remember, we keep our super stop and shield ganglion to ourselves. That means you, Jimmy. Oh, Magic, Master Pelagic, Bastiola, Bishop Pelagic, all the rest are too deep for you and me to see. Okay, so Tiago, the scene starts with really, really difficult words. I can't even pronounce them and I don't think our students need them. But actually, like again, for our overall knowledge, for our passive vocabulary, uh, those words uh, mean different zones of the ocean uh, according to the depth. Climb aboard, explorers! Uh, let me ask you, climb aboard, explorers, the teacher says. Uh, what is climb aboard and what is explorer? Yeah, when you go aboard, think about uh, a plane, you board the plane or you, mm -hmm. you go aboard the ship. I think that the teacher is asking the students to climb aboard. They have to climb to mm -hmm. his gigantic fence or something so that yeah, they can yeah. take a little yeah. tour mm -hmm. across the sea. But what I find interesting also here, Xena, is the connected speech because we say climb aboard. The B for mm -hmm. climb is actually silent. We don't say climb. So he pronounced yeah. the M as the last sound. And then you can join that M with the A for aboard. So climb, climb aboard, climb aboard. Climb aboard, explorers. Oh. Uh, then this teacher has a really funny way of communicating to his kids, to his pupils. Uh, he's singing some kind of song. And he says that knowledge, uh, exploring is lyrical. Uh, and you think thoughts that are empirical. Oh, knowledge exploring is oh so lyrical when you think thoughts that are empirical. There is a rhyme to it, right? So something lyrical is uh, something uh, like expressive, artistically beautiful. Yeah, that suggests a song. And empirical is something based on observation rather than some theory. You live in what kind of home? In an anemone. Anemone. Okay, okay, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Like at the beginning, it's really difficult to pronounce this word anemone. So Nemo struggles with that too. And then teacher says, oh, don't hurt yourself. And what does he mean by that? Yeah, I guess in that case, like don't worry so much about pronouncing this word correctly or don't try mm -hmm. so hard to try to pronounce this word in that context. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like it. Don't hurt yourself. You just like, okay. like you said, it's like such a mouthful. Maybe you can like even hurt your tongue <laughs> trying to say that but anemone yeah it's a difficult one true, anemone true. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so when we want to add some information or to tell something about your kid when you leave him for the first time in school like marlin does here for introducing this piece of information we often use this collocation just so you know 
Just so you know, he's got a little fib. Just so you know, he's got a little fib. I find if he's having trouble swimming, I let him take a break. 10, 15 Daddy. minutes. We have this if he is, that gets reduced to mm -hmm. if he's, if he's, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he's having. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he's having. H is dropped. And same happens with let him. Yeah. Let him take a break. Let him. Mm -hmm. It's actually something that would be nice to remember for our listeners and viewers because I think it happens all the time. It does. Yeah. With him, with her, mm -hmm. we drop that. Like call her, call her, instead of call mm -hmm. her. Don't worry. We're going to stay together as a group. The teacher says, don't worry. We're going to stay together as a group. Here, because T from together is between two vowels, we can see this D sound, the Lab T sound. Stay together. Stay together as a group. Okay, class. Optical orbits up front. Optical orbits. This teacher tends to use those fancy words, showing off maybe that he's really, you know, intelligent, <laughs> wise. Uh, so he says optical orbits up front. I think he's talking about the trajectory that a fish's eyes follow as it swims, right? That's the optical mm -hmm. orbit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those orbits, those are like those eye sockets in our skull or in fish skull and optical, something referring to sight. So basically we can understand that he's just asking them, look straight <laughs> in front of you. And remember, we keep our super esophageal ganglion to ourselves. Okay, this is a challenge. Let me try. Supraesophageal. No, supraesophageal. Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Good. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. Don't hurt yourself. Right. <laughs> right. Don't hurt yourself. So basically, this is like a brain of a fish. This is their central nervous system. Ganglion is referring to this processing center. And now, guys, to test your comprehension, watch the clip one more time, this time without subtitles. Hmm, I wonder where we're supposed to go. Bye. I'll pick you up after school. Come on, you guys, do this. <laughs> Get it back. Come on, we'll try over there. <laughs> Excuse me, is this where we meet his teacher? Well, look who's out of the anemone. Yes, shocking, I know. Marty, right? Marlin. Bob. Ted. Bill. Hey, you're a clownfish. <laughs> you're funny, right? Hey, tell us a joke. Well, actually, that's a common misconception. Clownfish are no funnier than any other fish. Ah, uh, come on, Cloudy. Yeah, do something funny. Yeah. Oh, all right, I, I know one joke. <laughs> um, there's a mollusk, see, and, and he walks up to a seat. Well, he doesn't walk up, he swims up. Well, actually, the mollusk isn't moving. He's in one place, and then the sea cucumber, well, they are mixed up. There was a mollusk and a sea cucumber. None of them were walking, so forget that I Sheldon, said Sheldon, get out of Mr. Johansson's yard now! All oh, oh, right, you kids. Ooh, uh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where, where'd you go? Dad, Dad, can I go play too? Can I? I would feel better if you go play over on the sponge beds. <gasps> That's where I would play. What's wrong with this fan? He looks funny! Hey, what'd I do? What'd I do? Be nice. It's his first time at school. He was born with it, kids. We call it his lucky fin. Dude, see this tentacle? It's actually shorter than all my other tentacles. But you can't really tell, especially when I twirl it like this. I'm H2O intolerant. <laughs> I'm obnoxious. Oh, let's name the zones, the zones, the zones. Let's name the zones of the open sea. <laughs> Oh, you better stay with me. Epilogic, mesopelagic, bathyolabispelagic, all the rest are too deep for you and me to see. Huh, I wonder where my class has gone. Oh, there you are. Come aboard, explorers. All knowledge exploring is oh so lyrical when you think thoughts that are empirical. Dad, you can go now. Oh, hello, who is this? 
I'm Nemo. Well, Nemo, all new explorers must answer a science question. Okay. You live in what kind of home? In a anemone. Okay, okay, don't hurt yourself. Welcome aboard, explorer! Just so you know, he's got a little fin. I find if he's having trouble swimming, you let him take a break, 10, 15 Dad, minutes. Dad, it's time for you to go now. Don't worry, we're gonna stay together as a group. Okay, class, optical orbits up front. And remember, we keep our super stop and shield ganglion to ourselves. That means you, Jimmy. Oh, man. Oh. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video and learning with us today. And I invite you to watch this next lesson if you enjoy learning with us. Leave me alone. I'm not kidding, Yodel Odie. Pop a worm pill and hit the road. I'm busy. You want to play? Fine. You can be my new astronaut. Go jump in the pail and we'll shoot you into outer space. Come on, it's real simple. Here, I'll even throw your ball in there. Follow the ball and jump in the pail. Come on, Odie. Just like this. Come on over here and just jump right into the 